Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Annette and I'm a photographer who posts videos all about creativity and sort of the more non-technical side of it. So recently I did a video on food photography and as a street slash documentary photographer, you know, that's not really my jam, uh, no pun intended. And um, I did actually enjoy it, so I'll post the link to it below if you want to take a look. And basically I used what I had in a house, which was not a lot, i.e. Um, tin of tomatoes, things like that, and came up with six images that I actually liked. I used just things around the house, like my coffee table as a backdrop, um, and then I just used natural light. I didn't even set up any lights or anything. It was just my camera, 85mm fixed lens, and that's it. It was quite challenging because I'm not really good at styling things. I'm not really patient. So I didn't shoot for very long, um, like I said, because I'm not very patient, but I just wanted you know, to do something really, really simple that hopefully inspires other people to just use you know, the things that I have around the house, use the house as a backdrop, use whatever equipment you have. You don't even need lights for it and just play around and experiment a little bit. So today I thought I'm going to challenge myself a little bit more because why not? It's isolation, so I've got nothing else to do. And I thought I'll take the shooting outside. So today is really, really warm. I don't know if you can see, but like I am sweating because it is so warm. And yeah, so I'm going to take it outside and we have this um, DIY deadlift platform that we built like a week ago or so. And it's got like a rectangular piece of wood in the middle and then two black pieces of material on the side. So I thought I'll see which background I can use, if I can use both maybe. And the only thing I might consider is a reflector just to maybe diffuse the light a little bit. Um, but I might also embrace the shadows and see how I can use the, the really, you know, harsh light. As for the food I'm going to use, I literally have no idea because we've got nothing left in the house. And we're actually meant to go to do a shop um, tomorrow because we do like a weekly shop to save us going to shops. And honestly, there's like nothing left in the house. Everything is like frozen stuff again. And I really don't know what I'm going to start with. I have a few ideas, but I think I'll need some time to ease myself into it again and just kind of do a few really unsuccessful shots that I'm not even going to bother editing just to kind of ease me into it and warm me up for some ideas and get the, as I say, creative juices, juices, creative juices flowing. Um, and see see where it takes me. As for expectations, I don't really expect anything good like last time. I mean, the fact that I came up with six images that I liked, I was quite sort of, uh, you know, quite surprised actually, pleasantly surprised. Um, so today I'm not going to have any expectations. If it doesn't work out, you know, it doesn't work out, but I'll give it a go, I'll give it my best and see what happens in the end. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take it outside, do some shooting and go upload the images and I'll either see you tonight or tomorrow. But obviously for you, it'll be in just a second. So yes, I shall see you in a bit. Hello, now is the next day for me, which is obviously the same day for you in the video. But anyway, I finished uh, uploading, editing and taking a look at my pictures and I came up with seven. So one more than last time, but um, this time I really had nothing left to shoot, like absolutely zero things in the cupboard. And what I ended up shooting was uh, just dry pasta and some old spring onions and one tomato. All right, so first of all, it was not really the best idea to be shooting in such a heat. Like today, we're back to normal British weather, i.e. it's cold, raining, and I need a coat. But yesterday I was shooting and I'm surprised I didn't get like, a, what you call, heat stroke. It was so hot and just like bending down all the time, then getting up and taking a look at the pictures or, you know, just like arranging things. 
um, it was just like so tiring and I felt like it was just sucking out all my energy and creativity. So I did end up using the deadlift platform for shooting and so the good thing is it's got a lovely like nice wooden background and the bad thing is where you got the black material it gets so hot like you can just burn your hands on it or feet if you stood on it. Um, so that was a bit of a challenge for me because I wanted to include my hands in some of the shots but you know I managed somehow. So I think this time because it was really really hot I really just I just had no idea what to do. I sort of I had some ideas in my mind but when I started shooting them things were not coming out as I wanted and like I said just the getting up and checking and realizing it's not really working it was just like draining me so much. But anyway, we did end up with some images, so let's take a look. Right, so the first one is, I guess, a little bit Bill Brandt inspired. You know, he did really beautiful, um, sort of slightly exaggerated shots of close-ups of people's limbs, you know, like arms and legs. And although mine's shot with 85 mm lens, so it's not really gonna, um, you know, exaggerate things. It's not as like a 35 mm lens would. But I think just the shape of the arm, it's quite sort of soft and yeah, it kind of, the composition reminds me of something that Bill Brandt would do. Obviously, he would do a lot better than I did, but you know, I'll take the inspiration from him. But yeah, I'm quite happy with the shot. I edited in black and white because I wanted the hand to stand out and the pasta to stand out. And yeah, I used a wine glass as a little prop. So the next three images I did in color this time and they worked together as a sequence. And I just, you know, embraced the really harsh light and went for quite muted retro style editing. So for these ones, I spilled the pasta on the floor and I kind of went for that old style advertisement kind of look. I think I just got a thing with hands, like if I don't know what to include, I always include a hand because I think they can just really add to the story without adding too many props to look kind of like out of place sometimes. You know, when you do style shots and then you just put random bits in the frame and it just looks like odd. Uh, for me, hands are quite natural and you can do so much with them. So for this shoot, I really struggled. I mean, I did struggle last time, but not as much as this time. And I think it was because of the heat and it was just like making me agitated and I really didn't like anything I did. And there were a few shots, well, actually quite a few shots I didn't include the, as the final images because I just, I don't know, the, composition was off, the concert was off, so I just completely binned them off my Lightroom. Alright, so for the next shot I shot some of my very old looking spring onions and I did still use 85mm lens but I used one of those really cheap um, magnifying glass thing, you know, the glass things you screw on top of your lens and it magnifies it. So with my 85mm lens I was able to get really really close and get that just that, you know, opening of the spring onion on the top of it. This time I went for more um, classical still life shot kind of inspired by, um, I guess, Robert Mapplethorpe. So I guess he's more known for his more erotic shots um, and portraits, but he did do some really beautiful still life shots as well. And the thing with still life shots like these, if you do it in a very sort of, you know, traditional and classic and elegant black and white, you know, it doesn't matter what the trends are on your Instagram Explore page or elsewhere on the internet because these images will stay fashionable throughout, you know, many, many decades. You are being more brave by embracing that more traditional part of photography and going against the grain, which is, you know, whatever the trends are at the minute. And you're just saying, you know, I really don't care for trends. I'm going to go for something that's going to, you know, withstand the time and people, you know, people um, as in the audience are gonna enjoy it regardless of if they look at it now or in 20 years time. So for the next one, I did a similar thing. I obviously took them out of the vase and I shot the bottom bit. And again, I went for that more um, classical fine art style of editing and shooting. And for this shot, I really kind of want to get that gritty texture of there's, you know, there's still a bit of dirt left on the spring onions and you can see the roots coming out and everything and just using a bit of dodging and burning, it really brings out the texture and it brings out the whites as well. And for shots like this, I kind of like looking at imperfections of what I'm shooting more so than making it stylized and too pristine looking. I, I really don't like that. Um, I like finding 
things we wouldn't really usually pay attention to, something that we would disregard. And that's the challenge for me. How do I use that and make it look nice and elegant? And the last image, I did one of me holding a tiny little tomato. And I just really want to get that harsh texture of the skin against a soft little fruit. Fruit? Vegetable. Or is it technically a fruit? I can't remember. Is tomato a fruit? Yes, tomato is a fruit. So I was right. Okay, so yes, so I was holding a little tomato and when the light was being, you know, when the light was really harsh shining on my skin, because my hands are quite brown at the minute, it really brought texture out. And yeah, I added some split toning, literally just a teeny tiny bit, just to make it tiny bit warmer. I didn't want it too gray. So yeah, again, I didn't have any expectations. And when I was shooting, honestly, I felt like I'm not gonna have anything worth editing on, until obviously I uploaded the pictures in the Lightroom and I started looking at them. And the ones I actually thought I liked on the back of my screen ended up completely binning off because they just looked so contrived and I was like, that's not really me. So yeah, I hope this showed you that you don't need to go outside and buy loads of things to create something nice. You can just use whatever is in a house and like, for example, for backgrounds, you can use your walls, your floors, tables. Um, you can use loads of textures like with fabrics. For example, I've used, um, we had this big sheet that we use for painting the room. It's like, like a protection sheet. So we used that before. You can use duvets and sheets and curtains. So there's all sorts of things you can use. And even in regards to food, I'm sure there is something in your fridge or your pantry that you can use. Like you saw from my pictures, I didn't use anything, um, you know, very fancy. I didn't go out and bake massive cake and have like loads of fruits and nuts and things and whatnot. It's just, just little things I found in the house and it took me a while to figure out how to use them. But that's the point of doing like a warm-up shooting. You need to ease yourself into being creative. You can't just like, you know, quickly come up with an amazing idea. You need to like test it out. You need to move things around, you know, change your composition and see how it comes out. And if in doubt, you can always add some human element. If it's say, you know, grab your husband and, you know, tell him you're gonna do some shooting and you want his hands in the picture or your kids or whatever. It just adds a little bit of interest to the image, I think. And it can still be, a nice still life fine art image even with a human element in it. So yeah, if you're interested in still life, I definitely recommend you check out Robert Mapplethorpe's still life work. Uh, Bill Brand, who I mentioned earlier, I don't think he's really known for still life as such. It's more like conceptual things and portraits and whatnot, but um, just the way he composes and how we use quite a wide lens, that's quite interesting. So maybe that will give you some ideas. As for trends, honestly, don't worry about following them if we still look at images that were taken at the beginning of 20th century and probably early as well and we find them inspirational and beautiful then you know they've withstood over 100 years of you know fashion changing and technology changing and everything and they're still so beautiful i had a few ideas what i could do next time um, i don't know why i'm continuing these food videos because like i said i'm not a food photographer but it's kind of fun to challenge myself and even though so it's like, before I do it, I think to myself, oh, I don't really know what to do. And then I start shooting and I'm like, mm, okay, this is kind of going somewhere. And then when I end up at least with at least one image, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, you know, I'm quite proud of this. I, I put time and effort into this and I ended up with the result and it's nice. So I had a few ideas that I might use. I did say I might shoot upstairs in my bedroom. So I might use that because we have nice, beautiful, like a blue wall. Um, and I had a few ideas of incorporating more of the human element next time. Another idea I had was I bought this um, disposable camera from eBay a while ago. Actually, it was meant for a holiday. It was supposed to go this month, but obviously that's not happening. So I thought maybe I could use that. It's like this really, really old um, summer holiday camera from from one of the UK travel companies, Thompson's, may Thompson's maybe, um, I can't remember. And yeah, it just look, it look, it generally looks really, really old. So I bought it for like a few pounds and I thought I'll just see what happens. So yeah, I got a few ideas to keep me busy and hopefully if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. I'm just glad that you got this far in my video and watched it. So hopefully I shall see you next time.